The Miss America competition has officially begun with night one of preliminaries last night. Coming up, we'll have reports from our team in Atlantic City, bringing you the latest on two contestants deep with Ole Miss ties. Good evening, and thank you for tuning in to Newswatch Ole Miss. I'm Sarah Kate Calaguire. And I'm Avery Sadler. The Miss America show isn't until this Sunday, but prelims for our favorite Ole Miss contestants, Miss Mississippi, Asia Branch, and Miss Tennessee, Christine Williamson, started last night. Prelim scores will help determine who will make it to the top 15 on Sunday. We have a team in Atlantic City to cover all the events leading up to the live show. Newswatch reporter Sarah Doan is in New Jersey with the latest on how our favorite women are doing. Sarah? Thanks, Avery. This is day two of Meek Up Miss America. Last night was the first night of preliminary rounds here at Miss America 2.0. Miss Mississippi Asia Branch had her onstage question. While the questions are getting you know, really difficult this year, ranging from kneeling during the national anthem to immigration, but Asia's question was, should health care be an entitlement? And while she said, no, it shouldn't be an entitlement, we need to work together to make it more affordable for everybody. Miss Tennessee, Christine Williamson showcased her evening gown last night. It was a white mermaid style form-fitting dress. But at the end of the night, it was Miss Florida that took home the talent preliminary award scholarship and Miss Wisconsin that took home the interview preliminary award scholarship. Tonight, Asia will be showcasing her evening gown. And today she told us that her dress is red carpet ready and this is her Miss America gown. Tomorrow we'll be chatting with Christine, but tonight she'll be doing her talent. We also got to catch up with Miss America 2018 Cara Mund and asked her about how the contestants have been doing this week. And she said that they've been doing great and adapting to all the new changes so well. From Atlantic City, New Jersey, Sarah Down, Newswatch, Ole Miss. Thanks, Sarah. Asia Branch won Miss Mississippi as Miss Tupelo, and she's an integrated marketing communications major here at Ole Miss. Reporter Brianna Bynum caught up with her today in Atlantic to hear how sh the competition is going so far. The 51 contestants of the 2019 Miss America pageant have been in Atlantic City all week. And Miss Mississippi Asia Branch says although the days are long, she enjoys every minute. We're here all day, but you know, the days really fly by because we're having such a good time and rehearsals are flowing smoothly and we're just all enjoying each other's company. So it doesn't feel as long as it actually is. Branch competed in the first round of preliminaries last night and is excited to participate in the final two rounds. It's the first night of preliminary competition, so it's definitely the most memorable thing that I've done, um, but I'm looking forward to the rest of the week. Branch is now preparing for evening wear and is ready to wow the crowd with her dress. My dress is definitely red carpet ready. Like when I picked it out, that's what I had in mind. In just a few hours, Asia will get to show off that dress right here in Boardwalk Hall, all while promoting her platform, empowering children with incarcerated parents. Very tough, you know, the situations we had to go through, the circumstances, they were not easy, but I allowed them to strengthen me instead of hinder me from reaching my dreams. Although very busy, Branch says she loves Atlantic City and being around the other contestants. Well, it's been so fun and just a memorable experience overall. Branch's time in Atlantic City is far from over with the final night of the competition on Sunday. Brianna Bynum, Newswatch Ole Miss. Miss Tennessee Christine Williamson was not available for an interview today, but we hope to speak with her tomorrow. And be sure to... Mississippi ranks at or near the bottom nationally with the student test scores. The Miss America. We have a team in Atlantic City to cover all the events leading up to the live show. Newswatch reporter Soa Dan Doan is in New Jersey with their latest on how our favorite women are doing. Sarah? Mississippi ranks at or near the bottom nationally for student test scores, but more than half the students in the Ole Miss Honors College this year come from inside the state. Newswatch reporter Miranda Crosby looks at how the college finds so many top students. Yasmeen Osman came to Ole Miss from Ocean Springs, but she almost missed her chance to be in the Honors College. I actually decided to apply two days before the deadline, so I'm really thankful that I did. I'm really grateful that I got in. 
Um, I, you know, I've been granted co countless opportunities that I wouldn't have had otherwise. The Honors College gives opportunities to more in-state students than out. According to Associate Dean John Simmons, he says they look at more than just test scores when deciding who to admit. Test scores are factored in, but they're not an exclusive uh, type of determinant. We have turned down perfect scores and we have accepted students with 22 ACTs. Um, so we, we don't even talk about a minimum ACT anymore. We just want to admit students who we think will make the most of the opportunities we can provide. The record-breaking Honors College enrollment of 1,600 students includes 54% from Mississippi. Miranda Crosby, Newswatch, Ole Miss. Teacher from Bramlett Elementary School did not expect to get 13 million views on Facebook and countless phone calls after posting this video. Holly Clay created a sensory path for her students when she realized some students with sensory processing disorders might need a brain break from the classroom. Her creativity has ignited a passion in others who want to bring this learning style to their parts of the world. Creative teachers often make all the difference. Mississippi 8th graders are struggling in math. According to their test scores, 22% are at or above proficient compared to 33% nationally. Newswatch reporter Ashley Smith explores how teachers are working to fix this problem. Oxford School District is one of the highest ranked in the state when it comes to student test scores. Oxford Middle School Principal Audra Rester explains what sets them apart. Uh, the teachers have just done such a great job of getting better at their, um, their craft of teaching and if they um, have collaborated and uh, one of our uh, hashtags is that we're better together and they truly have really um, solidified themselves as a team. Um, it's not necessarily your students and my students, it's our students. Principal Rester says the success at Oxford Middle School lies in the hands of the students and the Oxford community. Uh, the community is such a support of the school. Um, really, whatever, whatever we need, they are absolutely here. The school's teachers strive to help students reach their full potential. Our focus is completely on the kids and what they are able to do and then really honing in on that and zeroing in to see what we can do to just push them to the next level to challenge them to rise to the top. Getting to the top is what most Mississippi schools are working to do. Amanda Haley, Newswatch, Ole Miss. Each year, close to a thousand Ole Miss students travel all over the world to study. Spain, Japan, and Australia are a few of many destinations offered. However, in today's highly charged political world, is it still safe for American students to study abroad? Newswatch reporter Thomas Gorris investigates. Students at the Ole Miss Study Abroad Fair tried their luck at winning prizes, but the Study Abroad Office doesn't want students taking a chance with their personal safety. Study Abroad Assistant Director Brad Knoll says students abroad are required to download the Alert Traveler app on their phones. And it gives us geolocation for if uh, an event should happen, we're notified that we have a certain amount of students within a certain radius of that. Uh, we can contact them, communicate with them. Knoll also said students go through a travel orientation before leaving the states. Senior Walker Thornton is an ambassador for the Kappa Study Abroad program. Thornton studied abroad in Spain last year. He feels the opportunity to travel still outweighs the risks. Americans kind of tend to, to think they know everything. And, um, so I think it's always good to, to humble yourself and kind of uh, uh, assimilate a little bit to, to the country and, and, and test the waters. And. Despite high political tensions around the globe, Ole Miss officials ensure students that Study abroad is both a safe and exciting experience for students looking for something new. Thomas Gores, Newswatch, Ole Miss. The Court of Appeals is upholding the university's right to contextualize Confederate monuments, streets, and campus buildings. The Mississippi Division of the United Sons of Confederate Veterans filed their original petition in September of 2014 in Lafayette County Chancery Court. This petition requested an injunction against the university's diversity plan. This plan was put into place to move, rename, or contextualize Confederate monuments, street names, and buildings on campus. According to court documents, the petition requested that the university be prevented from altering, attacking, removing, or renaming any of the campus monuments. The university unveiled six contextualiz contextualization plaques around campus in March of 2018, among other contextualization projects. The use of jewels on campus has become widely popular. 
The school's policy prevents the use of electronic cigarettes, which includes jewels. The main concern of the smoke on campus is how it could affect students with asthma or other respiratory diseases. The penalty of being caught smoking on campus is a possible ticket, which could cost more than $25. The university has decided to, res to resign its two-strike drug and alcohol policy and implement a case-by-case -case hearing to address each offense. The William McGee Center for Wellness Education is scheduled to open due to conversations about how to handle the opioid epidemic. The university's hope is to provide students with a constructional and educational way to address their individual behavior. Thanks, Annie. Coming up, find out what one senator from New Jersey is doing to make sure the public has access to documents regarding Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh and see which famous actor has died. But first, Gavin Norton has your first look at the current conditions. Good evening, Rebels. So I have your upcoming weather headlines for the next couple days. And that of, that of course starts with scattered thunderstorms continuing through the weekend, and with that comes high humidity. Temperatures, however, will drop through the weekend, so you can look forward to a little bit of coolness. If we want to take a look at our radar, what we can see is that over here in the Oxford area, it's looking fairly clear, but down south, we do have some trouble with some storms of brewing. I'll let you know on Stormwatch what exactly that means. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. It's like, hello, that's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide and go seek. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move, so I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Hi, Krista. Take you, Jamie, to be my wife. When we found out that we were pregnant, we were just elated. We were just sitting there waiting for the pediatrician. She said she won't be taking you in as a client. We are a lesbian couple, but she's just a baby. She's the one you're denying the service to. Cincinnati's police chief says at least three people were killed this morning in a shooting. It happened downtown at the busy Fountain Square. The shooting began just after 9 a.m. local time when the gunman entered a loading dock and opened fire. The police chief said the suspect then entered the lobby of the Fifth Third Center building. That's where several police officers engaged him. A suspect is dead along with three others. Two others were injured. The motive for the shooting is unclear, but the FBI and the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives are assisting Cincinnati police in the investigation. An anonymous senior Trump administration official assailed President Trump's decision, making an op-ed published in the New York Times yesterday. The writer of the op-ed remains anonymous due to the Times, explaining that disclosing an identity would jeopardize the official's job. President Trump took to Twitter to share his opinion, stating if the gutless anonymous person does indeed exist, the Times must, for national security purposes, turn him or her over to the government at once. The New York Times has not yet commented on the matter. New Jersey Senator Cory Booker says that lack of access to critical documents is hurting efforts to question Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh, especially on issues related to race. Thousands of documents related to Kavanaugh's career are off-limits to the Senate Judiciary Committee conducting his confirmation. Yesterday, Booker questioned Kavanaugh extensively about his use of the term naked Rachel set aside in an email which is labeled Committee Confidential. That means it is available to the senators but not the public. Booker says he believes the email is so important he's going to make it public and he's prepared to take the consequences. I knowingly violated the rules that were put forth, and I'm told that the committee confidential rules have knowing con con consequences. 
And so, sir, I come from a long line, as all of us do as Americans, and understand what that, that kind of civil disobedience is, and I understand the consequences. Judge Brett Kavanaugh is President Trump's nominee to replace Judge Anthony Kennedy. Kennedy was considered a swing vote on the bench, and if Kavanaugh is confirmed, he'll most likely add a more right-leaning voice to the nine-judge court. Smokey and the Bandit star Burt Reynolds, who made his big screen debut more than a century ago, died today. The actor was 80 years old. According to his agent Todd Einzer, Reynolds died of cardiac arrest. The Michigan native rose to stardom for roles in major films like Boogie Nights and Deliverance. Reynolds also had his hand in directing and founded the Burt Reynolds Institute for Film and Theater in his home state of Florida. Most of the passengers aboard a plane that arrived from Dubai was quarantined in New York have been diagnosed with the flu or the common cold. The flight had come in from Dubai and was quarantined after 100 people complained of unknown illnesses. Health officials arrived on the tarmac and evaluated the passenger's symptoms. All tests for the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome were negative. Eleven people did go to the hospital and the rest were released after evaluations. One of the most legendary broadcasting executives may be leaving CBS. Les, Mo Les Moonves has been trying to figure out the future of CBS with his board while dealing with allegations of sexual harassment and misconduct in the past year. The claims of misconduct sparked the speculation that Moonves might reach a financial settlement and step down from CBS. CNBC is offering about 100 million exit package. It is currently unconfirmed whether or not he is going to leave. The past few days have been wet and humid as the remnants of Tropical Storm Gordon moved through. But is the rain here to stay? Gavin Norton will let us know if we'll see the sunshine anytime soon coming up on Stormwatch. Listen, you're my friend. I noticed you haven't really been yourself recently. Yeah, I feel like something's up. How are you? Are you okay? Is there anything you want to talk about? I just want to know how you're feeling. And listen, even if you don't know what to say, I'm here to talk. No matter what you're going through, I just want you to know I'm here. I've got your back. When you want to talk, I'm here. This one? No. Were you texting and driving again? Yes. Hi, Leah. Hi, Dad. Sorry about your bumper. <laughs> <laughs> I got some oxy after I hurt my neck. First, I took them to feel better. Then, I just kept taking them. I didn't know they'd be this addictive. I didn't know how far I'd go to get more. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth, spread the truth. Welcome back to Stormwatch. I'm Gavin Norton, your host, and I'm going to give you a look at the upcoming weather this week. Right now, it's a comfortable 81 degrees Fahrenheit outside. We do have scattered thunderstorms, though, and the rain chance is still sitting at 40%. However, if we take a different look, what we can see is that, regionally speaking, we are not the worst off so far. We can take a look at the lower Mississippi region, and we see remnants of a storm that will soon make its way up. Making a look at the regional weather, we can see that Oxford here is relatively cool with places like Corneth and Tupelo hitting highs in the 90 degrees. And tomorrow that will continue with Oxford going all the way up 
to 87 degrees Fahrenheit as mentioned. Tonight's forecast, though, comes with a little bit of cloud cover, and that cloud cover will bring down the temperature to 74 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds will still persist at about 10 miles an hour coming from that southeast region, and the chance of rain will drop all the way to 20 percent. Tomorrow, though, things are looking up as far as degrees Fahrenheit goes, but again, thunderstorms will still persist, looking at those winds still coming from the south-southeast region, and the high is 87 degrees. Taking a look at the five day, what we can see of note is that Sunday there is a 100% chance of rains right now and thunderstorms will persist all the way into the midweek next week with highs in the high 70s and low 80s. That's back to you all at the desk. Thanks Gavin. The volleyball team was able to defeat powerhouse programs like Ohio State and Southern Miss earlier this week. Let's see what they have to do to continue their winning momentum. And while the new Nike ad is continuing to spark debate, see how they plan to double down tonight. Don't ignore the subtext. It's on us to intervene in sexual assault. Because we can. Take the pledge at itsonus.org. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth. Without any bread. And kissed them all soundly put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. You think getting dumped by text is harsh? Try getting dumped by a tennis ball. My ex owner drove me out to the woods, yelled fetch, and by the time I bought the ball back, he was gone. Yeah, I was pissed. <laughs> but the folks at the shelter helped me let go of my anger. I learned coping skills, like taking it to the hole. Boom! Now I'm ready to fetch again. But how about I throw and you run and get it? Rebel fans, what's happening? Jason Price here bringing you an awesome Thursday edition of Sports Watch. Last weekend, the Rebel volleyball team kicked off their season with the Rebel Invitational. The Rebs put out clutch five-set wins against Ohio State and Southern Miss as they finished the weekend a cool 4-0. Weekend, the, this weekend, the undefeated Rebels will be headed to the Georgia State Sports Complex in Atlanta to take on Chicago State, Sam Houston State, and Georgia State. Chicago State and Sam Houston State are both at 500 with records of 4-4 four and 3-3. Four and three and three. The host Georgia State is currently at 2-4 and four on the season, so I'm pretty confident this will be another Ole Miss sweep. The NFL regular season is finally here, and that means everybody betting on the Patriots is back. The odds for each team to win the Super Bowl were released in Vegas, and believe it or not, the Patriots are the favorites yet again with 6-1 to one odds. Oh, but the Eagles won the Super Bowl. They got to be second. Nope, not at all. Not even a little bit. The Eagles' odds to win the Super Bowl are 14 to 1, the worst odds for a reigning champion since the Ravens in 2013. The return of the NFL season also means the return of the kneeling for the flag controversy. And what better way to kick off the first game of the season than to air a commercial with Colin Kaepernick as the narrator? That's what Nike plans to do during the Eagles Falcons game tonight and people have been expressing their feelings by burning Nike apparel that they paid for. 
Guess that's none of my business, but the ad features athletes such as LeBron James, Serena Williams, OBJ, and other inspirational competitors. Colin Kaepernick originally posted the ad on Twitter Monday, and people mentioned Nike 3.4 million times just 21 hours after the post. And finally, after all this talk about the game tonight, let's talk about the game tonight. The Philadelphia Eagles, who apparently, apparently everyone thinks that they're going to be garbage, are hosting the Atlanta Falcons tonight at Lincoln Financial Stadium. And I bet everyone's ready to see Carson Wentz back in action. Well, that's not happening. Wentz will be benched for the season opener. But I think Philly fans are just fine with settling for the backup. The Atlanta Falcons will see tonight if Matty Ice is worth that 150 mil they tossed him this summer. And we will all get to witness the Julio Jones-Calvin Ridley receiver combo. And something tells me they're going to be a little above average. If all this NFL talk is hyping you up, make sure to catch the game tonight at 720 on NBC. That's it for me, but if you're looking for more sports updates, be sure to follow our Twitter at Newswatch underscore UM, where we'll be live tweeting the home game here in Oxford. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Jason. If you've ever been in a major downtown area, you might have noticed people riding around on scooters. Coming up, see what companies are wanting in on the new way to scoot around town. Here is my handle and here is my spell. When I get all steamed up, then I shout. Tip, Tip me over and pour me out. Oh. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Cheers. Take time to be a dad today. We are Ole Miss Rebels. As Mississippi's flagship university, we dig deeper, see farther, work harder. We pioneered human organ transplants. We helped prove Einstein's theory of gravitational waves. We are distinguished as a Carnegie R1 top 2.5% research institution. We are Ole Miss, transforming lives and the world. They gave me Vicodin after my knee surgery. They kept prescribing it, so I kept taking it. I didn't know it would be this addictive. I didn't know how far I'd go to get more. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth, spread the truth. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Remember that to love America is to love all Americans. Because love has no labels. People are using electric scooters as a fun way to get around major cities. Now ride sharing companies want to be a part of the trend. Lyft launched a fleet, off, a fleet of e-scooters in Denver today. So far the scooter sharing market has been dominated by company Bird and Lime. Their scooters don't need a dock and can be parked anywhere by curbside for the next person to use. Uber is also expected to release its own rival scooters within a few weeks. So with this weather, it doesn't seem like we can be using those scooters. Gavin, can you remind me of what we're going to see this week? Yeah, uh, this, uh, this upcoming week, we're going to see chances of rain over 40% every single day with a guaranteed chance of thunderstorms on Sunday. So no, I don't find scootering the ideal way to slide around town. Yeah, definitely not. Thank you so much. That's all we have for tonight. Thank you for tuning in to Newswatch Ole Miss. I'm Sarah Kate Caliguire. Be sure to join us here again tomorrow night at 5 and on NewswatchOleMiss.com. You can also find our show on HottyToddy.com. I'm Avery Sadler, and thank you.